In the 1850s, Catholic German immigrants in St. Louis, Missouri, pooled their resources together in order to erect a church. In 1889, St. Laborious Church was successfully completed, a large Gothic-style house of worship with high ceilings, pointed arches, and plenty of space for many, many pews. A century later, in 1992, St. Laborious Church closed down due to a lack of members. The church was then repurposed into a skateboard park renamed Skate Laborious. What happened to St. Laborious Church is not some isolated incident. It is emblematic of a much wider trend. In the United States, somewhere between six and 10,000 churches close down every year, either to be repurposed as apartments, laundries, laser tag arenas, skate parks, or to simply be demolished. In my new book with Isabella Castlestrand and Phil Zuckerman, Beyond Doubt, The Secularization of Society, we explore what is happening to religion around the world and why churches like St. Laborious are being converted into skate parks. To start, we need to define two concepts, secularization and modernization. We define secularization as the process of shifting from beliefs, values, and behaviors rooted in the supernatural to beliefs, values, and behaviors rooted in the natural. And we define modernization as the transition from a traditional, rural, non-industrial society to a contemporary, urban, industrial, or even post-industrial society. Why these two concepts? At the heart of secularization is the link between modernization and secularization. Or, as we put it in the book, the more modernized a society and its institutions and individuals are, the greater the likelihood of secularization. That's all really abstract. Let's move it into the realm of the concrete. Do you know precisely how a cell phone is able to allow you to talk to someone on the other side of the planet in real time? Some people watching this video will know the answer to that, but the vast majority will not. For those who do not know how a cell phone works, do you think it's magic? Do you think it's the divine power of a deity? Do you think it involves pixie dust or unicorns? And if your cell phone breaks, are you gonna take it to a priest, a pastor, a rabbi, an imam, or a shaman to get it fixed? Or are you gonna take it to a repair shop where someone knows how to fix it? If you don't believe that cell phones work using magic, but rather that they function thanks to modern technology and engineering, you are employing a modern worldview. And it is precisely that perspective that leads to declining religiosity. Modern worldviews challenge religious claims, from the age of the planet to why clergy should dictate how you live your life. We are not the first to propose this theory. Early social thinkers like Auguste Comte and Max Weber recognized the challenges of modernity for religiosity. And many scholars over the years, from Peter Berger to Steve Bruce to David Vos and Mark Chaves, have all argued the same thing. Modernization causes problems for religion. In countries that are modernizing and have freedom of religion, secularization is happening. We examine changes in religious belief, behavior, and identification and show that religiosity is declining in countries like Spain, Estonia, Iceland, Czechia, Japan, Poland, Ireland, and Taiwan, among many, many others. Now, religiosity is not declining everywhere, but the theory doesn't argue that it will decline everywhere, only that it will decline in the countries where two criteria are met people have the freedom to choose to leave religion, and the country is modernizing. If leaving religion comes with severe penalties, like being put to death, as is the case in Mauritania, people aren't willing to admit that they're no longer religious. As a result, some countries have high levels of what we call artificial religiosity. People in those countries are unlikely to be as religious as official numbers or survey data indicate, but they are also protecting themselves from severe penalties by inflating their religiosity. What is particularly amazing about secularization is that it is playing out in very diverse contexts. We look at four countries in detail in the book, Norway, Chile, South Korea, and the United States of America, or USA. 
Let's consider some statistics. Between 2008 and 2018, the percentage of Norwegians who affiliated with the National Church declined from 77.9% to 62.2%. Between 1991 and 2018, belief in a god fell from 41.6% to 34.1% in Norway, and similar declines were observed in belief in life after death, heaven, hell, and religious miracles. In Chile in 1998, 52.2% reported a great deal of confidence in churches or organized religions. In 2018, that was down to 13.3%. South Korea is an interesting example of secularization because religious affiliation actually increased in South Korea for a short period in the 1980s and 1990s as it was rapidly modernizing. However, now that it has become a highly modernized urban country, Religiosity is plummeting in South Korea, and fully 54.9% of South Koreans identify as being atheists. They don't believe in a god at all. That is one of the highest percentages of any country in the entire world. And what about the USA? For a long time, scholars thought the USA was an exception to secularization because it did allow freedom of religion and was quite modern. But the Cold War delayed the onset of secularization because the federal government linked religiosity with national identity in the war against godless communists, artificially inflating religiosity until the Cold War ended in the late 1980s. Since then, the decline of religion in the US has been rapid. Religious attendance is inflated in self-report survey data. In surveys, just under 40% of Americans claim they attend religious services roughly every week. But when scholars like me actually verify attendance data, the number is closer to half of that. About 20% of Americans are actually attending services on roughly a weekly basis, which means about 80% of Americans are not regular religious service attenders. When the vast majority of a country's population isn't engaged with organized religion on a regular basis, it's hard to argue that the country is highly religious. Another fascinating statistic helps illustrate the rapid change in religiosity in the US, weddings. 48% of the weddings of 18 to 35 year olds in the US in recent years were secular, meaning they were not performed inside a church, a mosque, a synagogue, or other house of worship, and were not performed by clergy. As a sociologist who studies religion, I regularly attend religious services to see what is happening. In the book, I recount a church visit in the fall of 2021 when I attended a Baptist church that had been in existence since 1950 and was a cornerstone of my neighborhood here in Tampa, Florida. In attendance that day were eight women, ranging from their mid-60s to their late 80s. Two entered the sanctuary with the aid of walkers. The pastor, a middle-aged male, explained in a brief interview before the service that it was not a matter of if the congregation was going to close, but when. In short, where people have the freedom to choose not to be religious and live in modern societies, they are increasingly choosing not to be involved in organized religion. Secularization is happening around the world. We tackle a few other topics in the book. For instance, in one of the chapters, we discuss what secular life looks like, and in another, we examine the question of whether people are innately religious. If you want the longer, detailed answers, you'll have to read the book. But the short answers are... Secular life looks a lot like normal life. Because much of people's lives, whether they are religious or not, is now secular. Secular people are moral, happy, healthy, and well-adjusted, but they face all the same problems religious people face, relationships, making money, mental health concerns, and finding meaning in an indifferent universe. As for whether humans are innately religious, of course not. The suggestion that they are is a remarkable misreading of human evolution and the characteristics of both humans and the societies that we construct. What does all of this mean? We don't go so far as to suggest that religion will eventually disappear entirely. Scholars who have made that suggestion in the past have been roundly and reasonably criticized. However, 
We do think that religiosity will continue to decline when people have the freedom to choose whether they want to be religious or not, and they live in modern, technologically advanced societies. The continued decline of religiosity in the face of modernization is beyond doubt. If you'd like to support me in creating more of these types of videos, you can do so by donating to the channel through our Patreon page. This will also give you early access to videos and channel updates. You will also get access to our Discord server, where you can participate in discussions and debates with other members of our community. You can check it out by clicking the link in the video description.